So a lot of people have said to me, should I take out these old metal fillings in my mouth? That's a very complicated question. And I'm going to try to make you understand what's going on in your mouth if you have metal fillings in it. My name is Dr. David Shannon. I'm a dentist in Northridge, California. I have a dental practice. It's on Nordoff Street between Tampa and Reseda Boulevard. And metal fillings, what are they? We've heard them called a lot of different things. What everybody has to understand about a metal filling is, at one time, that was the only choice we had. You had a gold crown that was put over the tooth, or if there was enough tooth to be saved and to be fixed, it was drilled out and a metal silver colored filling was placed in that. But is it really a silver filling? No, it's not. A very small percentage of it is silver. It's just silver in color. 52% of that filling is made of mercury. Okay? Mercury is not a very good thing to have in your body in general. I'm not talking about your teeth right now. I'm just saying in general. Whether it's the federal government or state governments, they are trying to get mercury out of our lives. It's a heavy metal. It's not good for us. We don't want to breathe it. We don't want to eat it. We don't want to touch it on our fingers. We don't want to absorb it through our skin because it gets into our organs and it makes us not so good. If there's too much mercury in fish, you can get mercury poisoning. They tell you, don't eat this fish or don't eat that fish or don't eat fish that often. I actually have a friend of mine who wound up living on a boat and he caught his meals every day. He would fish and he would eat it raw, sushi, just slice it up right on the boat. Six months after that happened, he went to the doctor. The doctor said, you have mercury poisoning, no more fish. So we know there's mercury comes into our lives in a lot of different places and it's not good for us. So from that standpoint alone, a lot of people are saying, take these old metal fillings out. Unfortunately, that's a political hot potato. The government doesn't want to be responsible. The material people that make these materials don't want to be responsible for its replacements. The dental society as a whole doesn't want to be responsible for that. So nobody's willing to make a stand and say, this isn't good for you, get it out of your body. So officially, as a dentist, I am not allowed to say, take it out of your body. So with that, I'm going to leave that alone and put it on the table. You decide, you no longer have mercury in your thermometers, you no longer have mercury in your food, you no longer have mercury in the chemicals and the things that are in your house, in your home, at your workplace. It's been removed from every aspect of the water supply system. The only place it's left is in your teeth. You be the judge. You're an adult. You decide what you want to do with those. What I want to talk about is just if it's in your mouth and you go to the dentist, what are you to do? Well, if it's a really large filling, that metal is strong. I mean, it's made up of silver. It's made up of nickel. It's made up at some, at one time it was made up, copper was in it. Lots of heavy, strong metals, all bound together by this liquid that hardens mercury. So you've got this big metal filling in your tooth, and it's stayed, it's been there for 15 years. You're chewing on it, you're happy with it, everything is great. It looks a little black maybe, but that's okay. Other than that, it's in the back, nobody sees it, nobody cares. But here's my concern. You have this big filling, and I see this every day in my practice without fail. Somebody bites down on something really hard and that metal piece shifts. It's not going to break apart because it's metal. I mean, try pulling a nail out of a piece of wood. I mean, you're yanking on it and pulling and pulling. Nothing happens to that metal. The nail eventually comes out. It doesn't break apart. Well, the same thing with your filling. It shifts. It doesn't break apart under the stress of chewing. And what happens is your tooth cracks. Now, because you've had this filling in your mouth for 20 years, 15, 20 years, now you've got a broken tooth. Now the filling drops out as a big clunk on the floor or down the drain or wherever it goes or you swallow it because you're eating dinner when it happened and you thought it was part of your wife's cooking and the tooth is missing. Now you need a crown on your tooth. Now you need something major done to make that tooth whole again. And that unfortunately is a shame because if you would have looked at that filling if the dentist would have said to you, and you would have listened to him, you know what, you have a really big filling in there, you've gotten a lot of meals on that filling, I think you should take it out and replace it with something conservative, 
the newer materials, the better materials that give, that have a little more elasticity to it, that would allow some movement so your tooth won't crack, you'd have that tooth in perfect condition for the rest of your life. But now you've got a major condition that has to be approached. Now, it doesn't hurt when the filling came out, so now you're thinking, gee, uh, yeah, I'll, have to, I'll get around to one of these days, but I've got a whole laundry list full of things that I have to do, so I'm going to wait. That's not good, because right below where that filling was, when it's that large, is the nerve. And once that nerve gets bombarded by the bacteria living in your mouth, that nerve is going to become infected. And when it does, that filling that could have been replaced now is going to need a root canal. And now it's going to need a post to strengthen that root after the root canal is done. And now it's going to need a crown to rebuild it back to where it was. All that work has to be done. All that money. That's like a small vacation for the weekend for you and, and, and somebody else to go away for three days. All that money is going to go into one tooth when all you needed to do was take out that old 20-year-old filling and put it in with a new modern material that's meant to absorb the pressures of 1,000 square pounds per square inch. When you're chewing on a back tooth, 1,000 pounds per square inch. That's a lot of force. And those fillings will start giving out after about 15 years if they're not supported with healthy tooth. So, Think about what you have in your mouth, and don't forget, when you go into the bathroom and you look in the mirror, it's not just your bottom teeth that you can see. There are top teeth back there that have those fillings in it, too. So it's probably best to go to the dentist and have him look at it. Let them tell you how many old fillings you have, how many that you can see, how many you can't see. How much is it going to be to replace them? How much time, how much effort is going to be needed? I can guarantee you, it's a lot less time, a lot less energy, and a lot less money than if they start breaking one after the other over a period of time. So I hope this video was helpful for you. We have lots more on different subjects. Feel free to look through and see if there's something else you'd like to see. Call us. Um, come in for a consultation and see if we can answer some of your questions. And we'll get you back on chomping away 1,000%, 1,000 pounds. Thank you.